going to use notes. I'm going to tell you about my fear of speaking. And I'm going to tell you a speech that I haven't practiced. Let me start with the fear. Standing right here makes my heart beat about twice as fast as it was when I was sitting back there. I'm really nervous. The story I tell myself is that I haven't prepared enough and that by not preparing, I'm disrespecting you as the audience. Not only that, but I came into a meeting where we had two fantastic meet, uh, speakers precede me and now I'm shaking. So, beautiful speeches, yours, Andrea, I really appreciate that. If you don't remember anything else from my jumbled hot mess of a speech, I want you to remember just one thing, which is that the stories that we tell ourselves and that we tell other people define our life. The first thing I ever remember anyone telling me is my mother. She said to me, this is embarrassing. She said to me, you're going to break a lot of girls' hearts. <laughs> it's one of those things that you repeat to yourself, and then it becomes true. Later, people would tell me, you're smart, you're arrogant, you're lazy, you're not a good student, you're weird, you're a leader, you're ambitious, you're not a good speaker, you're very self-aware, you're inspiring. You're not a good student. You're adventurous. You're impulsive. You're lucky. You are a good speaker. You're not very self-aware. You're incompetent. You never love me. Two years ago, I was living in Switzerland, and I met a friend, a childhood friend, someone who I hadn't seen for 17 years. And she told me, Josh, you're just as energetic and intense as you were as a little kid. she told me was a truth that I never heard before, that I didn't imagine about myself. Let me take you back. In 1994, I was six years old, and I was living in Germany. We lived in a dead-end street, a beautiful little road, in a big white house, two cars parked in front. And inside, the first floor was a large open space with two round white columns. In the back, there was a large, grassy yard. In the winter, we'd go sledding on the nearby fields and build snowmen. And in summer, we'd run through the wheat fields, taller than us. We'd whiz around the bend and disappear. We'd create mud balls and throw them at each other. I had a dog called Sammy. The golden retriever jumped up. Yeehaw! It was my little horse. <laughs> I was energetic and intense. But when I was nine, we moved to New Zealand. And from being a 
lively kid. I went to sitting at the back of the classroom. But I didn't understand a word that the teacher was saying. I didn't speak any English. I started to learn. I started to feel smaller, even though I was getting bigger. Something changed inside me. I started to listen to the story that other people told about me and stopped listening to the story that was trying to speak out from inside me. So when two years ago, an old childhood friend told me that I was still as energetic and intense as I had been as a little kid, it was shocking, but it was also a huge relief. It was exciting to maybe become myself again. 